There's no doubt about it, using a diffuser will help your curls. Your curls will shrink up faster, so you'll get curlier curls, plus more volume. Air drying comes close, but it's just not the same results. But which diffuser to get? Not all of them are great. In fact, some of them are subpar and you just won't get the curlier curls and the volume you're looking for. I haven't tested a 10 of them, but I do have criteria in mind that I use whenever I evaluate any diffuser, and it's what helped me pick mine out, the ones I'm very happy with. I feel it's pretty easy to tell if a diffuser is going to do a good job or not. And so today I wanna to share the criteria that I followed when picking out my diffusers. First, let me say that a diffuser can either be an attachment that you put onto any old hairdryer, like this scenario, or it can be a hairdryer that specifically comes with its own proprietary diffuser, so meaning it's only going to fit on this particular hairdryer. And the diffuser is this bowl part so that you will get diffuser diffused heat, diffused airflow to help your curls shrink up without stretching out so you get curlier curls and more volume. So when you're looking at diffusers, you're looking at both the attachment part plus some qualities of the dryer part, whether purchased separately or they come together as a unit. So here are the most important points to consider. The most obvious one is the diffuser part, and they have varying sizes, meaning the diameter of the bowl, plus depth. How much hair can you fit inside where the curls are all curled up? So the wider and the deeper of the bowl, in my opinion, the better. Of course, not going to the extreme. You wanna be able to handle it. <laughs> but you can fit more hair and dry more efficiently if you have a wider and a deeper bowl. Also, diffusers usually have prongs. Most of the time you'll have these prongs touching your head, some or all of them. And I think it's really important to pick a diffuser where the prongs extend beyond the actual bowl, where the bowl finishes. That is so when you're putting it to your head, you can lift your roots without smushing your curls down toward your head. So there's a lot of room in here and I'm lifting, but there's a lot of room in here for the curls to be drying without being smushed. Then you also have holes in the diffuser bowl. And this is how the airflow gets diffused. So it's reasonable to say that the more holes, the better, because you have better diffusion of air rather than places where your curls are getting strong streams of air, which strong streams of air are going to stretch out your curls rather than encourage them to shrink. So those criteria have to do with the diffuser attachment or accessory itself the diffuser bowl. Now let's talk about the dryer. First, you have the speed of drying. Some of this you'll figure out when you use a dryer and you learn how long does it take me to diffuse my hair. But if you haven't purchased it yet, you're gonna have to rely on reviews. So read the reviews, see what people are saying about how long it takes to dry their hair. And do pay attention to people's hair type, meaning their hair density, their strand thickness, because somebody with fine low density hair, their hair is gonna dry a lot quicker than somebody with thick strands and high density hair because they've got a lot more hair and bigger hairs. You also want to look at the heat levels. We don't want to damage your hair with heat so at the very least I'm looking for a low speed but ideally your dryer will have low, medium, and high. Now not saying you will ever use high <laughs> but I really look for at least low and medium. Having said that, different dryers have different temperatures stated and practically speaking, so the low may be higher than the low or medium on another dryer. So this is another thing you find when you review dryers and or your own experience. And then there's air flow. How much air is the dryer pushing out? I at least look for low and high. Low, medium, and high would be better because then you have a low and medium option. Personally, I never use high. I'm either using low or medium. Most often, low. So those are the criteria. Three for the diffuser bowl itself and three for the hair dryer part. When you look at reviews and charts and things, people are sharing lots of other details. I don't typically pay attention to the other details because I don't think they're as important. I think they're workable, but the things that I've just shared, you want to get as good as possible in every case, and that will ensure the best result for your curls. I wouldn't skimp on the things that I've mentioned, except maybe speed of drying, because what's an extra five minutes if you get a better result, right? But the other ones, you don't want to skimp on the size of the bowl. You want the prongs that extend beyond the end of the bowl. You want lots of holes in the diffuser. You want low and medium options for heat, and at least a low, if not a medium option for airflow. Essentials. You won't go wrong if you do the best you can with those things. So having said all that, there might be other 
dryers with diffusers that meet my criteria, but I have two, these two. This one I purchased in two parts. I purchased this Rusk Speed Freak dryer and I purchased this Black Orchid diffuser attachment. This diffuser attachment will go on a lot of different dryers, but the advertised diameter is 1.8 inches. So you can put it on a lot of different dryers as long as they are that size at the end. And it goes right on and it comes right off. So very easy for traveling. My other diffuser is this Shark. And this is an all-in-one kind of purchase. And the diffuser attachment is specific to this dryer. So it's not gonna fit on anything else. You just pull it off and they belong together. Now let me tell you the pros and cons of each one. I'll do them in order. So now we're talking about the Black Orchid diffuser attachment with the Rusk Speed Freak dryer. Knowing you could put this on a different hair dryer, like maybe you already have one, that's definitely an option for you, would save you some money at the outset. Going through the pros first. This Black Orchid diffuser bowl is deeper and wider than the Shark. So I find that I can nest my curls up in here with the least disturbance and they turn out better. Another pro is, as I mentioned before, this is gonna fit on a lot of your dryers. So you may not have to buy another hair dryer, at least not right away. Now talking about the Rusk Speed Freak dryer itself, the pro on this one is the heat settings. So instead of low, medium, and high, or low, medium, hot, this one is actually cool, warm, and hot. So I use warm, and the warm actually is warm. It doesn't run hot, it doesn't burn my scalp. Some other dryers that I've tried in the past and returned, the low or warm heat actually does burn my scalp, so I think it's a higher temperature than this one at equivalent named settings. A con with this one is, it isn't the fastest dryer out there, but we're not talking hours here. I'm I'm talking 15 minutes-ish for me to diffuse my hair to about 80% dry. Now let's talk about the shark. The obvious that you can see right off the bat here is this is smaller and lighter. So travels better, easier to use overall, not so heavy on your arms, stuff like that. It's also an all-in-one purchase. So if you didn't have a hair dryer, you didn't have a diffuser, you don't have to make two purchases, you can just buy one thing and it's covered. It also dries your hair faster. So instead of 15 minutes using the Black Orchid on the Speed Freak, I'm at about 10 minutes with this dryer. And these are approximations, so rounded but there is about a three to five minute difference when I use this dryer <laughs> versus the other one. I also really like these prongs. In addition to them extending past the bowl like the other one does, and there being plenty of them, this one, you can actually extend them up and down with this lever on the side. So they're down, now they're up and back down. So that's pretty neat. So when you want to lift your roots, you have them extended. And when you're not doing any root lifting, just maybe curling up your curls or just holding them kind of like this. You don't have to have the prongs out, taking up room that the curls need to be in. So I do really like that. Pawns. One of them is that the heat settings on this are hotter than the Rusk Speed Freak. So even if I have it on the warm settings, I'm burning my scalp. It's uncomfortable next to my scalp. So I don't like that. So that means I can't get up close to my scalp as close as I would like, especially if I'm root lifting. Another con, this could be more expensive depending on if you already have a dryer and you could get the Black Orchid, buying this unit could be more expensive for you. But it is all in one, as I said. The bowl itself on this one is smaller than the Black Orchid. So I like the Black Orchid simply for that reason. You can fit more curls and nestle them without as much crowding in the other one. So there we go. These two are my top picks based on all the diffusers slash dryers that I have reviewed online, just looking at their specs and their images and whatnot, as well as the ones I've tested in my home. I think you could be happy with either one of these, but like with many things, nothing is perfect, right? <laughs> so for me, when I need to diffuse faster, I'm using the Shark. When I have more time, you know, just like an extra five minutes, I'm definitely using my Black Orchid on the Rusk Speed Freak. I think my curls turn out slightly better with the Black Orchid diffuser attachment just because the bowl is bigger and so the curls are less crowded. So if I had to edge out on curlier curls, I would say this one, the Black Orchid. But again, the time is definitely a factor. So if time is a factor for you, you'll still get really great curls and volume with the Shark and you'll do it in less time. So I can recommend either of these wholeheartedly. Look with this video for links to the actual models that I've tested 
and recommend. And if you need any help with your curly routine, text or email me. I can assist with non-toxic product recommendations, tips to get more out of your curls and help you love your hair better. And I can also help with recommendations on diet and lifestyle changes that will help your hair and skin be healthier because some of it is on the inside. If you want to see if working with me is even a good fit for you, go through a few quick questions at warty.com questions and we'll take it from there. God bless you. Bye-bye.